Yeah, that's right. All right, you have a Bible? All right, just make sure everybody gets a Bible. All right, get a Bible. Anybody need one? All right. Need a couple of Bibles. There's some that here on the stack. There we go. Okay. Covered. All right, find the book of Romans, chapter 3. Anybody else? All right. Very good. All right. <clears throat> that was fun. <laughs> this is the first time I have ever done a Nerf War in a church. <laughs> I just want you to know I feel kind of guilty, right? But this was a blast. To I told somebody it was okay because we had pastor's permission. So <clears throat> I, think it's, I think it's all good. <clears throat> all right. Romans chapter 3. Verse number 19, I want to read the verse, and then we'll talk just about this verse. All right? It says, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Let's ask the Lord to help us here. Lord, thank you for the time that we have to be here tonight. Lord, we thank you for those who showed up, and just thank you for what you're beginning to do here this week. Lord, we ask your blessings now on this service and just ask that you would open our eyes to the truth of this passage. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, so the title of this message is The Purpose of the Law. All right, the purpose of the law. Now, what is a purpose? All right, anybody have a, have a thought? What would be a purpose? All right, I purpose to have fun tonight, so a purpose is your intention, right? Or your aim or your goal. Right? Your objective, okay? So the purpose is just the intent of something, okay? So let me ask you a few questions, and I'll get you all to help me out a little bit, all right? What would be the purpose of playing sports? What do you think? To win! Amen. That is the correct answer, all right? The goal, the objective, the purpose of playing sports is to win. It is not to have fun, all right? It is to win, right? All right, some people may play to have fun. Some people may play to have exercise. Some people may play to enjoy the game. Some people may just want to compete. But that's not the real purpose of playing sports, is it? The purpose is to win, okay? Um, what is the purpose of your parents telling you to clean your room? Yeah? So when you grow up, it's not messy. So when you grow up, it's not messy. That's very good, all right? They're trying to teach you and give you some sort of life lesson, all right? It also may be very practical that your room is absolutely filthy and it needs to be cleaned, and they are trying to get you to do that, right? So they have a purpose in that, all right? What's the purpose of going to school? To learn. To learn, right? To prepare for life, to get an education, all right? What is the purpose of preaching? To hear That's... what God's trying to tell you. All right, very good. What were you going to say? Uh, same thing. Same thing? Very good, all right? It is so that you can better understand God's Word, all right? So that you can then in turn obey God's word. Okay? Does that make sense? Alright, so the purpose of preaching is to relay information to you from the scriptures and to give you the understanding of what the Bible is saying so that you can then just know it and be happy. No, so that you can obey right, what is given in the word. Alright? So we understand what a purpose is. So I want to talk here tonight about the purpose of the law. Okay? The purpose of the law. Alright? Now the Bible says here, now we know that what things soever the law saith. Okay? Now, first question that we need to ask ourselves is what is the law? Right? Now, Pastor Price mentioned it in his sermon a little earlier. Did anybody catch that? He said the law was the first five books of the Old Testament. You remember him saying that? Okay? Alright, so Genesis, <coughs> Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, 
Deuteronomy, okay? And really, in a greater sense, the law refers to God's law, the Bible, okay? But specifically, we'll just think about the first five books of the Bible tonight, okay? So what is the law? The Old Testament scriptures emphasizing at least the first five books of the Bible, okay? And the law is simply God's rules conduct or over um, governing your conduct of life, right? So it's God's expectations for you. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so we know what the law is now, okay? Now, the law has something to say. Right? Look at it there in verse 19. It says, Now we know that whatsoever, that what things soever the law, what? Saith. Say okay? So the law has something to say to us. Now it kind of makes sense to us if you say, you know, I have something to say to you because you can hear my voice, right? Okay? But the scripture talks about other things as well, other than a person that has speech or talks or has a voice, okay? So, uh, you don't have to turn there, but I'm going to flip over to Psalm chapter 19. I just want you to see a couple of examples of this in Scripture, okay? In Psalms chapter 19, the Bible says this in the first uh, three verses, okay? The Bible says that the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Okay? What's it talking about here? God's creation, right? the world that, in which we live. Did you know that the world in which we live has a voice? Did you know that, that it has a language? Did you know that our creation is speaking every single day? And did you know that there is no matter what your language is, you can understand the voice of creation? Right? What is the voice of creation telling us? Anybody know? The voice of creation is telling us that there is a designer, that there is a God, okay? Um, I know we, we, only, we only have two seasons down here in Fort Lauderdale, right? Hot and hotter, okay? <laughs> but you know what? It's all organized, isn't it? Okay? Certain times of the year, certain flowers bloom, right? And all of the flowers at that point in time bloom at the same time, don't they? It's amazing. It's, it's, as, if, it's as if there was a designer that planned it to be that way, and that's the way it is. Up where I live, we have four seasons. All right, there's these other two, all right, called fall and winter. You probably have never heard of those before, all right? But in fall, where I live, like all the leaves fall off the trees, right? And you know, it all happens at the same time. It's amazing. There's precision that is there, right? And uh, these things are designed. Um, it all happens exactly the way it's supposed to happen. Okay, uh, the Earth is a certain distance from the sun. Okay, if we were closer to the sun. But we couldn't live on planet Earth, right? It would be too hot. If we were further away from the sun, we couldn't live on planet Earth. It would be too cold. It's exactly in the right spot. It stays in exactly the right spot as it orbits the sun. Did that just happen by chance? You know, they'll teach you in your public schools that it happened by chance. You know, a long time ago, there was this big bang, right? With a big explosion. And then all of a sudden, the universe existed. That doesn't make any sense, does it? Have you ever blown up a firecracker? Right? You've blown up a firecracker, yes, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, 4th of July down here is really good. I really enjoy it, right? Yeah. Have you ever shot off a firework and blown it up and then like a wristwatch fall to the ground? <laughs> no, right? See, order doesn't come from disorder, does it? An explosion is disorder. So what they tell you with science in your textbooks doesn't make any sense. Creation itself, just as we look, as we saw the rainstorms today, it cries, it has a voice, it says, hey, there is a God. There is someone who made the world in which we live and made the environment in which we live. We got to, uh, we got to fly here this morning. And uh, you, let, you ever flown in a plane? I love flying in a plane. It is so cool, right? Um, today, when we took off, it was very, very um, uh, foggy, right? You couldn't hardly see anything. And uh, so we took off, and then maybe by the time we got just a few hundred feet up off the ground, we came up out of the fog in, in the plane, right? And then it was just clear, and you could see for hundreds of miles, it seemed, right? But all down on the ground, just a hundred feet tall, it was white. It looked like we were flying over Alaska, right? It was so amazing, so beautiful. The heavens declare the glory of God, right? I took a picture. I can show it to you if you want later of uh, when the plane was banking a little bit like this and took a picture of all those white clouds and the sun rising 
over that, right? Just brilliant, glorious, right? And creation has a voice. It speaks to us. It has something to say. And, uh, you know, when somebody has something to say or something is talking, um, we are wise to listen, aren't we? All right, so creation has a voice. We could go over to the book of Hebrews and uh, go to chapter 11 and verse number 4. Listen to this one. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, which he obtained witnesses that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he, being dead, yet speaketh. It's kind of interesting. So here's a dead guy that's talking to you, right? And, uh, you know, Abel decided that he could worship God on his own terms. And uh, you know what happened there, right? He ended up killing his brother, and it was awful, and all these different things. And we can learn from that that we need to approach God on his terms and in his way. So we can learn from the lessons of the past, and in so this dead man is actually speaking to us, okay? So here it says the law has something to say to us. The law speaks. And since the law is speaking, we need to listen to what the law has to say. Okay? Now, who is the law speaking to? Right? Look in your Bibles again. Romans chapter 3 and verse 19. Okay? Now, we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law. Okay? Now, the Bible verse is saying here that the law has something to say, the law has a voice, and the law is speaking, and it is saying that to anybody and everybody who is under the law. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, are we under the law? Okay? So, just take and go to Romans chapter 7, maybe just a page or two to your right, and I want us to look at the first verse of Romans chapter number 7. Okay? The first verse of Romans chapter number 7. All right, the Bible says, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. All right, so question for you. Are you under the law? You are. If you are alive, are you alive? Then you are under the law. And the law will have dominion over you as long as you're alive. Okay, so what does that, that, what does that look like? Um, have your parents ever said to you, look, as long as you live in my house, you're going to obey by my rules. You ever heard that? Okay. What does that mean? That means your parents have dominion over you as long as you live in their house. Does that make sense? Okay. So in the same sense that your parents have rule over you as long as you live in their house, okay, as long as you are alive and living on God's earth, you're under the dominion of God's law. Okay. So God's law has something to say, and it has a specific message for you and for me and for Pastor and for the ladies sitting in the back, okay? Now, what does the law say, all right? Um, you may hold your finger here if you want, but I want us to go back to the book of Exodus. Now, Exodus is the second book in the Bible. So it goes Genesis from the very beginning, and then Exodus. And I want you to find Exodus chapter 20. And I want us just to consider one chapter here of the law, and I want us to consider some of the things that the Bible tells us here and commands us, all right, um, because we are under the law, and let's listen to some of the things that the law says. Did you, everybody find Exodus chapter 20? All right. Let's make sure everybody gets there. Well, once you get there, I want you to find Exodus 20 and verse number 15. Everybody there? Look in Exodus 20, chapter, or chapter 20, and verse number 15. It says, Thou shalt not, what? Steal. Steal. Alright? So here's something that the law is telling to us. The law has a voice. The law is speaking to you. And the Bible says here, Thou shalt not steal. Okay? Now, question for you, and I want you to answer it. Have you ever taken something that wasn't yours? Yes. Have you? Yes? Everybody? Have you? You? Yes? You? Yes? You? Andrew? Yes? Pastor? Yeah. A pastor! Yeah. As a pastor of... Well, I wasn't pastor, but... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, All right. so the Bible tells us that thou shalt not steal, okay, but what all of us have just agreed to is that we've all stolen something. Oh. Now, let me ask you this, and I want you to answer me, okay? What do you call someone who steals things? Team in Pittsburgh. 
<laughs> you mean All right. you're one? All right, what do you think? What do you call someone who steals things? A stealer. A stealer? Not the Pittsburgh Stealers. What's a good word for it, right? We put them in jail if they're one of these, right? A thief! All right, you got it right? Okay, so you have all just told me that you are thieves. Okay? And God's Word is telling us here, you shouldn't be a thief, but all of you have just said to me, well, I'm a thief because I've stolen something. Does that make sense? All right? Now, let's consider something else that the Bible says. All right, let's look in verse number 16. All right, the Bible says there, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Okay, let's just boil that down and say it. It says, Thou shalt not lie. Okay? Now, have you ever told something that wasn't true? I have. Have you? Yeah. Have you? Have you? Okay. We all have, haven't we? Mrs. Duke, have you? Oh, I should, probably shouldn't ask my wife such a question, right? But she has, okay? We all have, okay? We have all lied. All right, now, what do you call somebody who lies? A liar. Are you a liar? Yes. You are, by self-admission, you just told me, right, that you at least told one lie. How many lies does it take to be a liar? One. Just one. Okay, so you're all thieves, and you're all liars. Do you see what the Bible's telling you here? It's fascinating, right? Okay, all right, uh, let's look at another one. You guys are doing so well here with obeying God's commandments, all right? Um, let's look in uh, chapter 20, verse number 7. And this one's tough, all right, but I want us to see it, okay? The Bible says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. All right, now I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand on this one, but have you ever done that before? You just answer to yourself. Can I tell you that I have? And I'm not proud of that, but I have. I remember exactly where it was the first time I took the Lord's name in vain. I'm ashamed of it. I was five. I was in kindergarten. I was playing at recess out near a big white propane tank with a red lid on top. Had a little bitty fence right around it, right? I have no idea where it came from. I have no idea why I said it. But I'm out there, and I just said something, and I, I cursed the name of God. I, I don't do that. I don't know why I did it then. But you know what? I did. Have you ever done that? The Bible says that thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. You know, since I have, I could say that I am a blasphemer of God, according to the law. That's not very uplifting, but that's the truth. You know what? And I, I, I would venture to say that we've all taken the Lord's name in vain. We may not admit to, maybe like me, but you know what? I did. And I did it when I was five. And by the way, it was at a Christian school. I'm ashamed, but that's the truth. Okay, now let's look in verse number 12. Exodus chapter 20, let's look in verse number 12. The Bible says, Honor thy father and thy mother. Okay, have you always honored your father and always honored your mother? There's this big smile on your face. Why is that there? Have we always done that? And we haven't, right? So we could say then that we're disrespectful to our parents. Does that make sense? We are, because we've not always honored them. Okay? So by self-profession here today, all right, I'm preaching to a bunch of liars, thieves, blasphemers, and disrespecter of parents. Sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? Okay? Now, I have just looked at one chapter in the Old Testament. How many books are there in the law? Five books. These are long books, by the way. 20, 30 chapters in each one, if not more. And we've just looked at one chapter. And already we're, we're finding that we're not stacking up so well at being obedient to God's commandments. Okay? Go back to Romans. Are you still in Romans? No, you just turned with me. Go to Romans, chapter number 3. In verse number 19, okay, so we've seen that we know what the law is. The law is God's commandments, all right? We know that law has something to say. We know that the law has something to say directly to us because we are alive and we are therefore under the dominion of God's law. And we know that God's law has a message for us and we've seen his message in his expectations or his commandments for us, okay? Now, what is the law's purpose in speaking to you? Okay, now, we talked about purpose before, right? remember? The intention. In other words, why is the law saying these things to you? Why does it say thou shalt steal? Why does it say thou shalt not commit murder? Thou shalt not commit adultery? Thou shalt honor your mother and your father? Okay? Why does it say these things to us? What is the law's purpose? All right? now, I'm going to tell you what most people think. All right, everybody look up here. 
Most people think that the law is speaking to them so that they can obey the law in order to please God in order to go to heaven. Okay? I met a man, uh, well, man, I met a teenager just last week uh, out in my community in Columbus, South Carolina. His name's James, okay? And I met him in a parking lot, and uh, he was taking out the garbage, and he had just taken the garbage out and put it in the trash. And I was walking around with another man, and we had our Bibles with us, and we were talking to people about Jesus. So I called James over and introduced myself to him, and we just began talking about the Bible and talking about spiritual things right there. And um, right there by the dumpster, right? You can you can talk to people about the Lord, I guess, anywhere. I was talking to James by the by the dumpster. But uh, anyway, I asked him, I said, James, how do you know for sure you're going to heaven? And he said, oh. He said, I'm definitely going to heaven. I said, well, how do you know you're going to heaven? He says, oh, because I'm a good person. I said, oh, is that right? You know. And then we began to have a conversation much like I'm having to you. Um, I was just down in Trinidad, which is a little island in the Caribbean just off the coast of Venezuela, very down there, right off the coast of South America, a couple of weeks ago, two weeks ago, and I talked to a lot of people down there. And I'd ask them that same question. I'd say, you know, are you going to heaven? And they'd say, yeah, I'm going to heaven. And I'd say, well, how do you know you're going to heaven? And they'd say, well, because I keep God's law, because I haven't done anything bad enough to deserve hell, because I'm a good person, right? See, most people think that if they can know the law, then if they obey the law, then they'll be able to go to heaven. So in other words, they think that the purpose that God gave the law to them is so that they can keep it. Okay? All right? I want to suggest to you, and I want to prove to you, that it is absolutely wrong. Okay? God did not give us the law so that we can keep the law and earn our way to heaven. Okay? That is not why God gave us the law. Romans 3.19 proves this to us. All right? So let's pick it up. We'll read it from the beginning of the verse again. The Bible says, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, here's the purpose, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become, would you say the next word with me? Guilty. Guilty before God. <clears throat> Can I tell you what the purpose of the law is? The purpose of the law is to prove to you that you are a sinner. The purpose of the law is to prove to you your sinfulness. The purpose of the law is to prove to you your guilt. Right? That's what the Bible verse is saying. All right, so when we looked at that verse, thou shalt not steal, okay? We look at that and we should not think, okay, if I don't steal things, I'll go to heaven. That would be wrong. Because then the purpose of the law would be so that you would keep the law. But the purpose of the law is not so that you would keep the law in order to go to heaven, but that you would know that you can't keep the law. To prove to you that you are guilty of breaking the law. So when the Bible speaks to you and says, Thou shalt not steal, then we automatically look at that and we say, Well, I can't keep that law. I'm guilty of breaking that law. Okay? That is the purpose of the law. Okay? It is to give you the knowledge of sin. Okay, look in verse number 20 there. All right, it says, Therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified as in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. So why did God give us the law? So we would know what sin is, so that we would know that we are guilty before God. All right, does that make sense to everybody? So did God give us the law so that we could keep the law in order to earn our way into heaven? No. God gave us the law so that we would know that we're guilty and that we are a breaker of His laws, that we are a sinner. All right? If I can say it this way, in a sense, God's rules were made to be broken. Okay? He made these rules so that you would look at them and you would realize that you have broken His rules. And in realizing that you've broken the rules, you would understand that you are a sinner, that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of of God, as the Bible says also in this chapter, in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, okay? Um, quick, uh, another little uh, thing from Trinidad, this is, this is pretty neat. Um, there was this man who came in, I was preaching in the services there, and there was this man who had never been to the church before, he, we were having revival meetings that night, kind of like this, except it was for the whole church, and uh, this man came in, he had never been to the church before, so we introduced ourselves to him and, and so on and so forth. And he was one of the people that we had invited uh, that week as we went out and talked to people. His name was Curlin. And um, 
Curlin, as I started preaching, uh, not long after I started preaching, he got straight up out of his seat, he walked to the aisle of his church, and he, he bolted out the back of the church. He just left the building. He's left. I'm like, well, that's weird. <clears throat> I mean, I know I may not be the greatest preacher in the world, but, you know, none of you have gotten up and left tonight. You know, I appreciate that very much, right? You're sitting and listening. And I, I, you know, I didn't know if maybe I had offended the guy or, you know, what I had said or whatever. Well, I'm preaching or whatever and goes on about 10 or 15 minutes and the guy comes back in, walks right back down the aisle and sits right back down where he was. I thought, well, this is strange, right? And uh, so after the service, I went up and introduced myself to him and sat down and talked to him. And he said, you know, I just had to get up and leave. Right? He said, I feel things when I come here to church. <laughs> I'm sorry, nobody's ever said anything like that to me before, ever. Right? I'm like, what are you talking about? What are you feeling? Right? And he kind of looks around like this, and I'm not lying to you at all. He says, I feel guilty. Right? That is the purpose of God's Word. Amen. When the preaching of God's Word is done well, people feel guilty. Because they know they're not living up to the standard that God has for them. We're falling short of God's expectations to us, right? So does anybody have a good talk with that guy uh, named Curlin? Uh, you need to pray for him. He, he's got a little more understanding before he can trust Christ to be a Savior and, and have that guilt to be forgiven, right? Uh, but I think that the Lord's working on him, and I'm, I'm proud about that. Um, or excited about that, not proud. Um, some people think, some people think, uh, and this is true in our society, you'll, you'll run into this. Some people hate this book, okay? And they say, you know what? If we could get rid of the Bible, all these rules, all these laws that God has, right? If we could get rid of the Bible, then we'd get rid of guilt, and we wouldn't feel bad anymore, right? And we wouldn't have this uh, pesky preaching and all these things, you know, that says, you know, we shouldn't be this or do that or whatever, and then we could just live the way that we wanted to, and we could have no rules, and it would just be fantastic, and there'd be no guilt in the world, and it'd just be true. It'd just be great. You know what? But that's not true. You know, even if we didn't have the Bible, you still have guilt. And I want to show you why. All right? You're still in Romans, right? Look in Romans, all right? And I want you to look in Romans chapter 2, okay? And I want you to look in verse number 14, okay? Right now, the Bible starts off here. It says, "For when the Gentiles now a Gentile is anybody who's not a Jew." So, is anybody in here Jewish? Okay, we're all Gentiles, right? So it says, "For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, in other words, they don't have the word of God that was given to them." Okay, it says, "Do by nature the things contained in the law." It says, "Look, they don't have God's law written down for them. God had given the law to the Jewish people, and they were carrying it on throughout all time, and they were supposed to be an example and spread God's law to all the world." Okay, but the law was given to the Jews. And he says, now look, these people out here, the non-Jewish people, when they don't have the law, but by nature they do it anyway, when they do what's contained in the law, these, having not the law, are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. You know what? Even if you didn't have the Bible, God's law is written on your hearts. So that you know, when you do something wrong, you know you've done something wrong, your conscience lets you know that, and you still feel guilt. Isn't God good? He's getting the message to us, okay, that we're guilty, and we'll see in a little bit that that's a good message that we need to receive. Okay? So the law is given to us to expose our sinfulness. Not so that we can keep the law and be good, but to let us realize that we're not good. Okay? The Bible says there's none good, not even one. All right, so the purpose of the law. The law was given to be broken so that you would realize that you were a lawbreaker. Okay? Not so that we could keep it, so that we know that we're guilty. Right? Now, if you're guilty, it helps us know something else. So let's... Just a few pages to your right is the book of Galatians chapter 3. Okay? Galatians chapter 3, and I want us to look at verse number 24. Okay? Galatians chapter 3, and verse number 24, and then we'll wrap this up. Okay? Okay, the Bible says, Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster. Right? A schoolmaster just means teacher. 
Okay? So the rules are our teacher. Now the teacher has something to say, and is saying all these rules to us so that we can know that we're guilty. The law is our schoolmaster, our teacher, to what? To bring us unto who? Christ. To bring us unto Christ. That we might be justified by faith. Now that term justified means to be right with God. Okay? Now, I want you to look up here. What I'm trying to teach you from the Bible tonight, okay, is that according to the Word of God, if you've never trusted in Jesus Christ to be your Savior before, you are not right with God, and you are not at peace with God. And things are not right between you and between God. Okay? That's what the law says. That's, that's, that's the purpose of guilt, so that you would know that you're not right with God. Now, it says here that it is our teacher, the law is our teacher, in showing us our guilt to point us unto Christ. In other words, when we realize that we can't get ourselves to heaven, then we have to look for a Savior. We need to look for somebody who can get us to heaven. Okay? And that Savior is Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, I'm just going to read the most famous verse in all the Bible to you. All right, you know it, but I'm going to read it to you from the Scripture, so that just so you know that these aren't my words, John 3, 16. All right? For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. All right? That word perish means to spend an eternity in hell. The penalty for our sin, okay? And we'll talk more about that this week. The penalty for our sin is to be separated from God. Right? No sin can enter into the presence of God, right? Now, by confession of every person in here, we're all sinners, okay? And no sinners can go to heaven because we're guilty. We're lawbreakers, all right? And the Bible says here that uh, because we're guilty, that we need a Savior. And it says here that, um, or we'll talk more about some of the specific verses about this or whatever, but because of our sin, we deserve to be separated from God forever in a place called hell. Hell is real. Hell has real flames, and hell is forever. It lasts just as long as heaven does. Okay? And the Bible says because we're sinners, we deserve to go there. This is what the law is teaching us. Okay? That we can't go to heaven because we're sinners. And so the Bible says uh, in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world. I'm so thankful that God loves sinners. Right? God loved the world. Right? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He gave Jesus Christ. Yeah, go ahead. You want to... Oh, you want to do anything? <laughs> okay. Uh, what's that? 25 minutes. What's that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we probably need that. 25 minutes. 25 minutes. good. Got to take that call from mom. 25 minutes. You all right? Yeah. She's not upset, is she? Okay, good. All right, sounds good. All right, so for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, okay? That whosoever believes in him. What happened when Jesus came? Did Jesus ever sin? No. No, he didn't. He was perfect. He was the son of God. He was perfectly righteous, okay? What happened to Jesus at the end of his life? He died, he died on the cross of Calvary, okay? The Bible tells us when Jesus died on the cross that he took your sin and my sin and Pastor Price's sin and God put them onto Jesus Christ. He took our sins off of us and he put them onto Jesus. And then God poured out the wrath and judgment that you and I deserve onto Jesus Christ. And he died for your sin. Okay? He took your punishment for the sin that we all have done. Isn't that good news? Right? So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Why did God give his only begotten son? Because we're all guilty... And we all need a Savior, and He loves us, and He's trying to provide us a way to be forgiven of our sins. So He has paid the penalty for our sins, and praise the Lord for that. Now the Bible says there that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, spend an eternity in hell, but have everlasting life. Be forgiven of your sins and spend an eternity with God in heaven. That sounds pretty good, isn't it? Especially after the message of the law that says, hey, look, we're all condemned and guilty and deserve to go to hell. Here God says, look, I've provided a way. I've satisfied the payment for your sin, and if you'll just believe on me, then you can have eternal life in heaven. All right? Now, it does not say, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever doesn't steal shall not perish but have everlasting life. Do you see that? 
the Bible does not say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever doesn't take the name of the Lord God in vain should not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you see that? The Bible doesn't say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever keepeth the law shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Right? The Bible says he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, what's the word that, it, that is there? Belief. What does it mean to believe? To trust in or to rely upon. To trust in Jesus that he did die on the cross for your sins and he paid your penalty so that you can be forgiven and have a home in heaven. Isn't that great news? The law has something to say to us. The law is not given to us so that we can know uh, what we need to do in order to go to heaven. The law was given to us to expose our guilt and to point us to the fact that we need a Savior whose name is Jesus. And all we have to do is believe on him to have our sins forgiven and to have our home in heaven. Okay? We'll be talking more about this this week. Okay? But I want to encourage you to do this tonight. All right? If what I've said makes sense to you and you said, I don't, I've never trusted in Jesus as my Savior. I, I don't really understand what that means. But I do know from your message tonight that I'm guilty and I need a Savior. I want you to talk to me. Or I want you to talk to Pastor Price. And we'll just show you how you can know for sure that your sins are forgiven today. Today and that you are guaranteed at home in heaven forever because God loves you and he gave his son to be your savior, all right? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, I thank you so much for all that you've done for us. I thank you for your word. I thank you for giving us the law so that we know that we're sinners, so that we know that we're guilty, so that we know we need a savior. And Lord, then we can see Jesus and Lord just praise you for what you've done for us. God, thank you for being so very good to us. Lord, we love you tonight, and I pray that if there's one here who does not know for sure their sins are forgiven, and has never done that before, they've never trusted in Jesus, and Jesus alone to save them, Lord, that they do that tonight, that it asks me or pastor about it, and in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, guys, give me just a second to mention a couple of things to you. Uh, boy, that was good, wasn't it? Did y'all know what the law was for? You know, a lot of people think the law is something that you keep so that you can be good, so that you can get to heaven, but the law is something that God uses to show us that we're not good so that we can know that we need Jesus and He is the one who is able to get us to heaven when we receive Him. And it's great to have clarity about that. Thank you, Brother Duke, for that. Uh, let me just share with you guys something I appreciate about Brother Duke's preaching is that he really, instead of constructing a message, he preaches the Bible. In other words, you know when you're done looking at what he said, I can go back and I can see exactly what he said because there it is right there in the Bible. And the Bible's God's Word, and that's a distinctive of this church and this ministry. That's something we try to provide for the people that come here, is that the preaching comes right from the Word of God. How many of you guys feel to come back tomorrow night? Everybody's going to be back tomorrow night? Okay, good. Then everybody here tomorrow can make sure and bring a friend. And again, uh, you, you guys, if you're from the same neighborhood, like uh, you four are all from the same neighborhood, you may want to consider consolidating and figuring out, you know, if four of you brought a friend, each of you brought a friend, that would be cool, mm -hmm. and it'd be great for each of you. But it might be that if, say, y'all knew the same guys that came, then you could say, okay, they're all my friend, this one person, and he gets the points. So you may want to, you know, because uh, probably tomorrow we'll have some kids from this neighborhood, and neighborhood over here, and, uh, you know, they, they might do that. So you may just want to think of a strategy uh, to make sure that, that you get your friends. But I'll tell you this, you can't win unless you bring a friend. And so I, I've had, I talked to a bunch of teenagers and said, I'll be there tomorrow. I couldn't be, they couldn't be here tonight, but they're going to be here tomorrow. They're going to be here Sunday. And that makes it a lot more fun. When you have, tomorrow we're going to have some great outdoor activities. And I uh, recommend for you, uh, it's fine to wear nice clothes, but I recommend wear something tomorrow that you're not... Um, wear something tomorrow that if something happened to it, you wouldn't shed tears and cry about it, okay? So uh, wear something, because we'll, be, we'll get, be getting hot and sweaty tomorrow. And then tomorrow's hot dog night. Um, I don't know about you guys, but uh, when I hear hot dogs, I'm sort of I sort of have a uh, kind of a split uh, impression. In other words, when I hear of hot dogs, I wonder what hot dogs, right? Because some hot dogs are good, some hot dogs are not good. Yes. And so people tell me hot dogs, and I think bar ass. They have bar ass down here. I don't think oh. they do. They, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know, it's made. That's those are the pink slime hot dogs. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Pink slime. And they're made from pork and chicken. And they don't look like a pig or, or a chicken when you look at them. They're just 
you know, so those those are okay for feeding your dog or something like that, but they're not really great for feeding teenagers. The hot dogs we have tomorrow, I, I don't remember if they're half pound or quarter pound, but they're big Ooh. hot dogs, and they are not pork, and they are not chicken. They look like cows because yeah. they are made from beef. Yeah. And you'll get one tomorrow, you'll get uh, plenty of hot dogs. And it's, that's tomorrow, right, Melissa? Did I say that one? Yeah, it's tomorrow. So tomorrow night, that's the, that's the meal. So let your friends know, hey, if you come to youth group, you're going to get food, and you're going to have some crazy games. And guys, better than that is the spiritual aspect, the, the, the preaching of the Word of God. And I'll just tell you, the things we learned tonight uh, about remembering God, remembering your Creator in the days of your youth. You don't want to live and end up being an old person and saying, you know, man, I wish I'd known how to live. Waste of my life. And then knowing why the law is, those are things that could really help your friends. You want to be a friend? Invite your friends to the youth group. Tell them about the hot dogs. Tell them about the games. And tell them about the preaching. Tell them, you know what? The preaching's real. It's not... Sometimes people creep me out. Church people creep me out. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you go to church and it's just like people are so pushy and they, you know, you just feel like, man, this... Ah, I don't know. No, it's real here. We just preach the Bible. We lay it out there. Give it to you so that you can know it and use it. Okay, Brother Duke, uh, I need help. i got to give out a um, curiously strong... Uh, Altoid can, and I paid attention and I have an opinion that like five of these guys deserve one night. So uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I, I'm going to do two. Okay. Do good. two. Of them. I get to give them one? Yeah, you do one and I'll do one. So no, don't give it to him. That's, huh? That was mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank um, you very much. And then I, man, I'll tell you what, I, every one of you guys could have gotten one, but this young man chose to sit on the front row and pay attention. Is what That's I was that. like. I was like, you know what, choices. <laughs> so there it is. Okay, so guys, bring a friend tomorrow, and let's let's try to have at least 20 tomorrow, and maybe like 30 Sunday yeah, or more nice. teenagers. Let's get a bunch of people here, and let's have some crazy games, good times, and all of that. Now everybody's getting a ride home with with the bus, right? You guys are on the bus, right? Mm -hmm. Jose and Eduardo, you guys are on the bus. Uh, I don't know yet. Okay, I'll tell you what. We'll head for the bus because we told 25 told them 25 minutes. We'll head for the bus. You ask your mom on the way to the bus? They're here. Oh, they're here? Your mom's here? Okay, so you're not on the bus. Okay, so we'll take you guys. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, I can probably take... Melissa, if you want to take my truck home, do you want to do that and then I just take the bus? Does that make sense? Or, do you... or I could just take my truck with these guys and take you. I'm just trying to figure it out. Okay, we're going to go ahead and dismiss... Uh, have these guys with I think I better take you guys home because our church yeah. has a policy if we picked you up and we don't have your parents permission and for somebody else to drop you off we'll drop you off not because I don't think that they'd be okay with your parents taking them but I think that that would be right so okay let's head out don't forget about this too about you can be the the, the person that brings the most guests gets to be the person who wins a waterproof autographed by <laughs> the Duke the Dustin Duke uh, evangelist, it smells like mothballs. <laughs> it smells good, doesn't it? It's doesn't nice. it smell like camp. It's, it's brand new. Yeah, it's really nice. And it is I've only a, used it about. Highlighted, times. almost red, red, uh, almost red. Oh. Preached from by the Duke, the Dustin Duke. Okay, you're dismissed. Let's see it. Anthony, where'd you put it? Good to see you again. <coughs> Jose! Jose! Glad y'all came. Are you glad you came? Yeah. Good. Good to see you too. I guess. I'm gonna bring this up. <laughs> no, it's great. Andrew, nice to meet you. Yeah, likewise. Okay. All right, that'd be fine. Bye bye. <coughs>